Good morning, church. This is Kevin Asbury, and I have the pleasure of serving as part of the pastoral staff here at Christ Central Church. I'm excited to worship with you guys this morning. I want to encourage you to sing along. We've uh, put words on the screen for you, so uh, do your best to sing along and worship with your family at home. Come all you weary, come all you thirsty, come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Come all you sinners, come find his mercy, come to the table he will satisfy. Taste of his goodness, find what you're looking for. For God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and only Son to save us. Whoever believes in him will live forever. Bring all your failures. Bring your addictions, come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting there with open arms. For God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and hope, son to save us. Central, we like to do something called God sightings. And all that is is simply being aware of the ways in which God is working around us and sharing that with each other so that we can encourage each other and be on the lookout ourselves for ways that God might be active in our communities and in our families and around the world. At this time, we'd like to share a little bit of that with you. My God sighting this week was uh, seeing my fellow workers with the school system uh, working together to prepare and distribute meals for uh, students in need uh, during this coronavirus outbreak. On the next day, the great multitude who had come to the feast, when they had heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, 
took the branches of the palm trees and went out to meet him and began to cry out, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the king of Israel. And Jesus, finding a young donkey, sat on it. And as it is written, Fear not, daughters of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. These things his disciples did not understand at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered these things were written of him, and that they had done these things with him. And so the multitude who were with him, when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead, were bearing him witness. For this cause also the multitude went to meet him, because they heard that he had performed this sign. And the Pharisees therefore said to one another, You see that you are not doing good to all people. Look, the world now has gone after him. Good morning, friends. My name is Andrew. I serve as part of the pastoral staff here at Christ Central Church. I've read to you a, a passage out of uh, the Gospel according to John, chapter 12, verses 12 through uh, 19 this morning. And normally if we were meeting together today, we would be celebrating the fact that it's Palm Sunday. Normally we would be talking about what uh, in, in church circles is referred to as, as the triumphal in, entry, uh, where Jesus has, has basically completed uh, or come to the end of his earthly uh, mission on here and he has entered into Jerusalem. He's about to be uh, betrayed, arrested, put on trial, uh, handed over and crucified, uh, which seems like uh, a very dark and, and uh, bleak moment for uh, the disciples, the early followers of Jesus. But as we know and what we'll celebrate next week, uh, that three days later God resurrected Jesus for his faithfulness, for him atoning for the sins of the whole world. Uh, and that it, began, it marked a new page in salvation history. And so let me back up just a minute and say that normally uh, on this Sunday we would be talking about the triumphal entry or we'd be talking about the fact that uh, Lazarus, as it says, uh, Lazarus was raised from the dead just a, a few verses ago uh, in the Gospel of John and he never says a word and we'd, uh, in the entire time. He never scratches, he never has a monologue, he never says anything about what it was like to be dead and to be called back to life by his friend, by his master, by his Lord Jesus. And that would be something that we would normally be talking about. But given the days that we're in right now, um, it seems like maybe what the prudent thing to do would be to uh, re-preach our gospel favorites today. But when our reality that we live in right now demands that um, we come up with a new gospel imagination, and so we're going to stick kind of in the line of where we've been the last couple of weeks uh, because now more importantly than ever, friends, for the local church all across the country, and we're going to celebrate Easter next week, and it's going to be different than it's ever been before, and it's going to be fantastic, and people are going to know Jesus' resurrection power once again, and we're going to say praise be unto God that he proves faithful whether he comes uh, in the power of the Holy Spirit in a gathered place in a sanctuary or whether the power of the Holy Spirit co-ops uh, the bandwidth and raises people to life through preaching that comes online. We're still going to celebrate the resurrection next week. But today, we're going to focus on what God has continued, I think, to point us to in these uh, kind of days of crisis. And it's this idea that what God is doing something new in our midst. And that one of the things that uh, He is doing new in our midst is he is, He's forcing us to cultivate a holy imagination as a church. He's forcing us to look at the possibility that life maybe can be and should be differently than what we've lived. And he's inviting us into a space to see what he's doing in our communities, to see where he has already been at work, and wait on us, invite us as his church to join him in the work that he is already doing and he continues to do, and that maybe we've been a part of and that maybe we have missed as well. But before we move into that, I do want to acknowledge something that uh, I tried to touch on week before last, which is this idea that anytime we have to do something different, uh, it brings a sense of loss, and with loss comes grieving. And friends, I just want to say this morning that sackcloth and ashes can only go on for so long. And when grieving takes hold, if it's not dealt with in a healthy way, it can become destructive 
because we don't have an ability to see the possibilities into the future. And so one of the things that we're going to stick in this line with, and one of the reasons we're going to stick in this line of talking about some of our current realities and what lay ahead, is because if we lose sight of the fact that even in our loss, God is making something new, fantastic, marvelous, generational change in the local church, particularly here in North America, but globally as well. If we lose sight of that fact, friends, it would be easy to be swept up in the tide of hopelessness and be taken back out to the sea of concerns and anxieties and drowned in that riptide. And friends, as part of your pastoral staff, I don't want that to happen to us. And so I continue to... Um, kind of hone and hope that we can stay focused on one particular message. And here's the idea I want you to focus on today, is that when this plague blows over, the church cannot go back to normal because the church will not be able to return to business as usual. And I've had a whole lot of people that I've mentioned that to in the last few days, and they keep looking at me and saying, you keep saying that uh, we can't go back to normal, but why do you keep saying that? Because we really need some normal right now. In fact, um, if anything, normal is what we want right now. And friends, I get that urge too. I really do. Sincerely, I do. But here's what we need to stay focused on. Is that many of you, and I'm talking to um, the local church here at Christ Central. Uh, I have many of you are tuning in from all parts of the country. Maybe this applies to your church as well. But it is specifically uh, applicable to our church here is that in, uh, in what sense does it make sense for us as a local church, Christ Central, to have prayed for revival and then spend all our time and energy fighting to go back to the normal that we asked to be delivered from not too long ago? And so why would we ask for restoration of the Holy Spirit power to the church in North America but here as well? Why would we ask for restoration of the Holy Spirit power to the local church and then lament the loss of the era of powerlessness? And let me say that just a little bit differently. In other words, if we said, and again, church, this is here locally for us, if we said that we believe that the church needed a shaking up and if we worked over the last little bit of time to get the right people into the right places for spiritual leadership uh, for a time such as this, then why would we want to uh, clamor to go back to a time that we already admit is not necessarily what we feel like God is inviting us to into the future? Now that is a mouthful and that could be completely scary in any local church and particularly uh, this one as well, but let me say something that I hope is a little bit of a reassurance to you, but also going to be tempered, is that the gathered church of Jesus Christ here on this earth is here to stay, friends. Short of Jesus coming back to getting her, um, even though it's not in its uh, normal form right now, the gathered church in this country is here to stay until her Lord comes back to get her. And we celebrate that and say praise be unto God for that. And we're meeting this, this morning whether we see each other or not. The gathered church is gathered today, even though it's not in a way we're, get, uh, we're used to, but we're getting used to now. But here's the other part I want to temper it with. It's the gathered church is here to stay right now, but we're having to, in this crisis time, we're having to relearn our scattered church roots. Let me say that. The gathered church is here to stay, but right now, church, we're having to relearn our scattered church roots roots. When you say scattered church, what are you talking about? Well, I'm talking about some kingdom realities that have been long-standing hallmarks of the church brought to this world by Jesus Christ. And this morning, I only want to talk about three and just say this particular thing before we move into the first point, is that there's a, there's a real reason that God is able to leverage our current circumstances of not being able to gather together and I think it is directly related to this idea of being not just a gathered church, but also a scattered, a scattered church as well. So here's the first point I want you to hang on to, is that right now we are scattered for a reason. We're meeting in a different format for a real reason that goes beyond the current plague that is in our country and globally affecting so many people. The real reason is, is that uh, God is reminding us, friends, that we are a people with a mission, not a people of methods. If you're writing that down at home, let me say it to you one more time. 
God is reminding us we're scattered for a reason, and that reason is that we are a people with a mission, not a people of methods. Now, if you'll think about it, in one weekend, the entire United States church proved that the digital experience could replace the in-person worship experience. And in fact, there were a lot of us who didn't even know that online church were legal just until a few weeks ago. But in one weekend, friends, the entire gathered church was scattered to the online platform and we proved that people could still preach the gospel, could still respond to the gospel, and God could still be glorified and His church could still do miraculous and amazing things in the community. Friends, this time right now is just a reminder that we are a people called to join with Jesus in transforming our worlds. And we do that. We join Jesus in transforming our worlds by loving, serving, saving, healing, freeing, inspiring, and teaching everyone we come into contact with all God has taught us and commanded us to do. That's what we're called to do. It doesn't matter if we do it in a gathering known as a Sunday worship experience or if we do it through the online platform and through our homes and our communities and our workplace. God's reminding us that we are a people with a mission, not a people married to method. And so I'm going to ask you um, to consider this question no matter what local church you're affiliated with uh, because I've heard a lot lately about how um, people miss worship. We're going to come to that in just a second, but I'm going to ask you a question here. And then I want you to really think about this in the days and weeks ahead. And let's dialogue about it. You and I, call me, email, text, whatever you'd like to do. And here's the question. Ask yourself this. Have we as the local church been having an affair with our method? Have we as the local church been having an affair with our method? Have we been having an affair with our denominational affiliation? Have we been having an affair with our, our theologies or, or with even our meaning of spirituality? Friends, are, have, we been, have we been having an affair with our methods? And as I said a minute ago, I've heard a lot in the last few weeks about how, how many of us miss worship. And I don't even say this to be um, cute or snarky. It's simply a question. Is, is, the question is, why are we missing worship, friends? Because worship is the end goal of mission. And worship is the natural response of the Holy Spirit's transforming work in and through our life. And I would suppose that even if we're not meeting in the gathered space, that the Holy Spirit's power is still at work in you. He is still doing things. He is still making you into the very image for which He restored you through salvation in Jesus. I would assume that you're able and I'm able, we're able, church, to worship Jesus without respect to the fact that we're not in the same space. I would assume that still is true. And if, it is a, if we miss worship, um, perhaps the right thing to do is, is for us to begin to join in the praying the psalm together, Psalm 51. God, do not take your Holy Spirit away from us, but restore the joy of our salvation to us. Friends, we can continue to worship whether it's in space or not. And right now, God has scattered us to remind us that we're a church not primarily of worship. We're a church because we have a mission. And we're not necessarily concerned with the method. And so what many of us, though, and myself included, what I don't think it's worship that we're missing. Many of us are missing community right now, friends. And this is absolutely wonderful, not that we're missing it, but that we acknowledge it because, and here's the thing, because that reminds us that we are conformed, we are made in the image of God. And God, be, He has built us to be in community together because He is Trinity. He is community. And so it's not a thing to necessarily be upset about that we're losing. It's a confirming thing that you and I are created in the image of God. We're a part of His church and we're not meant to live in isolation. We're meant to live life in community. And here's how that works for you and I. All right? Is it... You and I can continue to live into that community, even though it's different, by staying engaged with our 8 to 15. 
you have supernaturally and strategically been placed in between 8 and 15 people that God wants to reach, that wants to connect with, and He's asking you to join with Him to transform your world, and you and I can still do that right now. And it's an urge that you already feel because it's an urge to be in community, and that's connected with your being created in the image of God, and we just want to celebrate that. But I want to circle back to something I asked you a minute ago. And I just want to say it in a little bit different way this time. Is that we are not married to our methods of church. We are married, though, to the Lord of the church. And that's so good. I heard you saying yes from at home. So let me say it again. Is that we're not married to the method of church, but we're married to the Lord of the church, friends. And if you just said yes, and I heard you all the way in here um, in the cardboard room this morning, I heard you say yes, then I'm going to ask you to do this. Then can you put the, your yes on the table? Can you join me in putting that yes on the table? And let's get back on mission together and not be over concerned about business as usual and the methods that we've become accustomed to in the past. Can we do that together? In the days and weeks ahead as we live into the new normal, can we just put our yes on the table? comes from Ed Stetzer, by the way. Can we put our yes on the table and let God take care of the rest? Can we, can we be willing to jettison our affiliation and our attraction to, to methods? And can we focus on the mission of loving, serving, saving, healing, freeing, inspiring, and teaching people about Jesus, about this Savior that we know is priest, prophet, and king. Could we do that together? Secondly, I think what, what God's doing through scattering us into our homes and not allowing this gathered space right now, we're scattered for a reason, friends. And here's the second one I want you to write down if you're writing it down at home. God has scattered us because the pain in our community is on the street. It's not here in the seats. Let me circle back and add it to you again. Is that God has scattered us to show us, to remind us that the pain in our community is on the streets. It's not here in the seats. For years, friends, we have heard from the uh, book of James that faith without works is dead. But friends, now's the time for us to live by faith and act in faith because the pain is out on the street. It's not here in the seats of the church. Now that doesn't deny that some of us are experiencing real pain in grief, in loss, in real hurt. That doesn't deny that at all. It is only saying that we acknowledge that in our pain, Jesus came to meet us in that pain. And he did not leave any stone unturned to meet us in that pain. He was not scared. He was not worried. He was not going to be turned away. He met us in our pain. And friends, this scattered opportunity of the church, I think, I hope, is to remind us that God came to us and there are people in the community in our 8 to 15 that God wants to reach that he can now reach better because we're scattered. We're in everyday community with those people and not inside here in the church. And so here's what I want to encourage you. If, if masks, as I heard on the news the other day, if masks are the need that the community has the most, then there should be no other place in this community turning out more homemade masks than the local church, friends. Break out the sewing machines and your home at class credits. Let's get to work if that's what the community needs together. If your neighbors or friends have some need for real social contact, then here's what we need to do. We need to walk across the lawn, rap on the door, back up 12 feet, wait for them to come to the door, and have a conversation. Yes, it's weird, but God has burst our bubble on what it means to be his church, friends. And we cannot live, um, we cannot live as if that reality is, is like it was just a few weeks ago. And so if you're missing your waitress, here's another way that, that we can meet the pain that's out on the street and not here in the seats. If your waiter or waitress at your no, uh, normal grocery store or breakfast spot or, or somebody you meet uh, bags groceries at the grocery store, if they're really not there, you're not able to see them, you could bust your tail to find their phone number to be able to break a call off to them and just tell them, hey, you really don't know me, but other than I tip you or, or you do know me and I'm missing you and I just wanted to say that I'm praying for you, that I see you, I long to see you, what can I do for you, how can I help you? 
Send them the Facebook request. Get on Instagram. Do whatever it takes to remind them that not only are they in pain, but that the God of all creation through you and I sees that pain and recognizes that there's pain on the street and it's not in the seat and that God is on his way. He is meeting people through his people to meet them where they are. Friends, he has scattered us for a reason, and it's to remind us that there is pain on the street, and it's not necessarily here in the seat, and that the God of all creation wants to meet them. And the final thing I hope God has scattered us for, and it's the last one, and forgive me, <clears throat> forgive me, it's the last one that I'll leave you with this morning, friends, uh, and I pray that, I pray that this one um, maybe resonates with you as much as any of the others. But uh, the final reason that, that I'm really hopeful um, that God has scattered us and he, he's uh, utilizing these effects of us not being able to gather is a reason for scattering us. Number three is it's time for his church to proclaim what we have all along claimed. Let me say it again. God scattered us for this reason. It's time for his church to proclaim what we have all along claimed. You know, we've all heard the conventional wisdom of the 80-20 rule, right? And we live by it and we say it in the local church as much as anywhere that 20% of the people do 80% of the work. Um, and maybe that's what Jesus alludes to when he, when he says the scripture we're all familiar with, that the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Well, let me just say to you loud and clear, Christ Central and every church here in North America, not anymore. Not anymore, it's not. Because right now the main doors are locked behind 100% of every church person. And that does not mean anything other than 100% of the local church is out in the community like never before. And so we are scattered for this very reason that it's time for you and I, for all of us as the local church to proclaim what we have all along claimed, friends. It's time for us to... to um, well, let me say it this way. Maybe God's saying to us, church, that, the, that break time's over for the church, that our union rep um, may have lobbied for more off time, but it's time to get back on the job, friends, is that um, maybe what God is, is saying to us here is that um, we don't need another, C we don't need any more CEUs. We don't need any more Christian education courses right now. It's time to get to work, friends. It's not um, no longer acceptable for us to say that we don't know anything about our community. That option is blown up. That popped just a few weeks ago. Maybe what God is saying is that 100% of his church now, if you know God is good and that God is good all the time, that it's high time for you and I to be out in the streets proclaiming to people what we have long claimed to people about our faith. It is time that we publish our faith stories and issue an invitation to those in our 8 to 15 to come along with the ride on the ride if they want to. There are plenty of seats on the bus of God's kingdom. So maybe here's the thing that he has scattered us for a reason, friends, and it's to proclaim what we have all along claimed. We sing it in our songs, and you know it wouldn't be a normal week if I didn't have some song reference. But maybe, maybe what God's giving us space to now, friends, is to proclaim what we have claimed all along, is that there ain't no mountain high enough. There ain't no valley low enough. There ain't no river wide enough. There ain't no sin dark enough to keep him from saving you. It's high time that we begin to proclaim that. And I think God has scattered us for a reason to remind us that you got a story, I got a story, we got a story, and that if God is transforming your life, my life, our life, that we can't any longer hold that story up to our own standard. We can't keep it to ourselves in the next few days, friends. My encouragement to you is now that you're under the stay-at-home order is to begin to pencil out that story. Where has God, where, look at your life history, write down the highs and the lows, reflect on those things and begin to put language to where and how you've seen God radically move in your life throughout history so that in the most certain of circumstances, when you run into somebody in the days and weeks ahead that needs a word of hope, you can administer that hope. You can be the means by which God brings good news to somebody in your 8 to 15. You can be the means by which God loves somebody, freed somebody, healed somebody, saved somebody for the love. You and I, friends, 
are invited to a brand new space. A brand new space. And it doesn't have anything to do with our methods. It doesn't even have anything to do with the fact that, that we gather on Sundays. It has everything to do with being a people that have a mission and their own mission. And that mission is to join Jesus in transforming this world. I read a few days ago, and I'll close with you with this this morning. I read a few days ago a Wall Street Journal um, op-ed piece. The headline said this, a coronavirus great awakening, question mark. And the author, Robert Nicholson, wrote, Could a plague of biblical proportions be the United States' best hope for religious revival? As the 75th anniversary of the World War II uh, end approaches, there is reason for us to think that that could be so. Friends, right now, you're at home, you're listening to me through the, through the computer, through um, all number of mediums through your cell phone. You've watched Kevin sing once again this morning. You've seen David share a God sighting. Friends, we're scattered right now for a real reason, for a time just such as this, that the community needs the church more than ever now. And that when this plague blows over, friends, I would be doing you a disservice if I didn't remind you of this, that when this plague blows over, the church will not go back to normal. And we say praise be unto God for that because she will be more lovely, she will be more beautiful than she's ever been before because she cannot go back to business as usual. Why? And that's the $64,000 question. And why we can't go back to normal? Why we can't go back to business as usual? It's because God is doing a new thing. And he's inviting us to join him. And if that's not a triumphal entry, I don't know what is. Church, I love you. I pray for you. If there's something that we can do, you let us know. And I will remind you that Easter Sunday is coming. We'll be communicating this week with you about that. And let me pray for you before we go together this morning. Father, I thank you for an opportunity to be in this space and just to proclaim the good news. You've scattered us for a reason. And God, it's a reminder that you've got big work to do in this world. And you need, you need more people because the harvest is plentiful and the workers have been few. God, it's time for 100% of your church to stand up, to man up, and to get to work, to join with you in transforming the world. God, thank you for inviting us to such a holy and awesome opportunity. And we pray that you would continue by your Holy Spirit, not just to uh, allow us to prove ourselves up to the challenge, but that you would lift us up through the power of your Spirit to be up to the challenge, to the work that's ahead. Bless us and keep us and make your face to shine upon us and give us peace. Friends, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. I love you.